BSA Bushcraft. I'm out here with a fellow scout and we're actually prepping for next weekend. We're making a survival camp out with the scouts. My scout master was kind enough to give me a weekend to teach some of the younger scouts and scouts my age some of the skills that I learned involved with the Pathfinder events and just watching YouTube videos for the past two years or so, what I've learned. So we're gonna teach them a fire station. That's what I'm gonna run. Uh, my fellow scout's gonna teach them the shelter station that we're using for interior. I've never been to the place we're doing this at, but my fellow scout will be showing up to the actually do it. just a special thing we're gonna do at night to teach a couple of different So we're out here, I'm gonna show the camera, I'm gonna show you guys how to make a frog gig. There's many ways to do it, and actually you could just carry a metal one, which would be much easier, but if you're out in the woods and have to craft one, I'll show you how to do it. It's pretty simple. I mean, it's probably going to take 15 minutes, maybe a little bit longer, because I'm explaining it to the camera. And also, I'm going to show Fisher how to make one, so if you guys stick with me, we'll get started. The thing I need to find, or me and my buddy need to find, are some batons. This is a piece of maple. It's actually still growing alive. It's got some leaves, some buds this year, but I cut this last year for a project right here. I should have cut it lower, but I'll fix that right now. I'm gonna cut it as low as I can get it with my Baco Laplander saw, and we'll use it as the baton, because we're gonna have to split the top of this gig into quarters, quarter sections, to make the four prongs for it. And you can split it down more if you want. You don't have to split it in quarters, you can split it into fifth, sixth, whatever you want to do, it's up to you. But I'm going to saw this down here so we both have a baton to use. We'll just use this one and share it. And like I said, it's not a very long project to do, so I'll get this cut and then we'll find our actual saplings for the frog gigs. My baton, and again, this is maple. For size, for your baton, it should be probably about the size of your forearm. It should be the size of your forearm. And then for length, I like it from my armpit to my palm. But for Fisher, this is a little small, but it will still work for this project. His would just be a, a bit larger. But again, make sure it's the size of your forearm. It should be. It doesn't have to be that big, but it'll work if it's a little bit smaller. And then from your armpit to your palm. So that right there is the baton I'll be using. I found the sapling that I want to use for my frog gig. Fisher's already got his cut. His is a bit larger, so we're gonna experiment here. But from from what I've known, I, I think they should be a little bit thinner, probably three quarters to an inch in diameter is what I think. And again, some people may tell me different because I've never actually used one. But I've built multiple ones for the SA and shoot, sand shoot for uh, Pathfinder TV. And you always wanna make sure it's taller than you because if you make it shorter than you, and you trip, it's gonna go right into your eyes, right into your face and puncture you. You don't want that. So make sure it's taller than you. So I need mine, I'm gonna make it. I'm actually gonna cut this at the bottom. I may use the bottom for the gig itself or I may not, I'm not sure. I'll just cut it and then find out. So I'm gonna to come to the bottom and on this tree, this is a maple tree, it's got this offshoot. So most likely when this gets big, it's not gonna survive anyways because there's two growing here. And most likely the bigger one's gonna survive and this one's gonna die anyways. So I'm kinda of doing it in a favor and getting it gone now. So this tree won't suffer anything from this one, from this offshoot. So I'll cut it at the bottom here. And I'll take this one and see what I can do. I get a close up of this offshoot, what I'll tell you guys about. And this tree, they could, I've, I've seen a lot in the woods and so is Fisher, he told me about this, that they'll grow and then they'll just unite into one big stump and that could happen in this case but instead of cutting something that's just a lone sapling that will survive this has a chance that it won't and you can see in the middle it's kind of rotting out a little bit it's punky in the middle so that's just another case of it may not survive to be a mature tree but they could grow in a big stump that could happen if anybody's going to tell me that yes it could but the chances are it may not survive and I'm just gonna cut this one opposed to just a single sap. So I wanted to clear that information up if any, any of you guys had questions on that subject. Hold my sapling out into this clearing so you guys can see better and it's easier to cut. and It'll be a lot safer because I'm not struggling at all. I'll pull my saw out and I'm gonna show you guys and also show Fisher and anybody who's watching how to do the plumber's vise. It's a safe way to saw and you won't be sawing in the triangle of death. That's your arteries and if you cut one, you're gonna bleed out within minutes. 
So you need to stay outside of that circle. And I'm right-handed, so anybody that's right hand dominant, what you're gonna wanna do is use your right leg and put the piece under and squeeze down. You'll be using your left hand to hold it and it's outside the triangle of death. And I'm gonna trim this bottom off, which I cut down to that bottom of the sapling, get it adjusted, open my saw, and I can easily saw a straight cut, <coughs> excuse me, and get it safe because I'm not inside the triangle of death. Cut my frog gig now to size and I'll back up a little bit so you guys can see. Again, it's taller than I am, so if perhaps I do trip with it, it's not gonna go, it's not gonna impale me in the face or the eyes to injure me or puncture me. So it needs to be taller than you are, plus it's just gonna give you a longer reach to get the frogs. And you may not have to get in the water because you got a longer reach to gig them. I have not trimmed this off here because I want to show you guys a tip. If you have a hatchet or something, you could use that a lot quicker than just a knife. But I see a lot of people trying to just split down this V or the crotch of this twig. And what that's going to do is it's going to allow it to split down. So if you turn it around, do not go into the actual V. Just go out and it's not going to split. It's going to take it straight off. And if you have a sharp knife it should do it pretty easy and I'll show you guys I'll trim it up a little bit more I'll actually trim it up now just trim it up a little bit more so it's a little neater and easier on the hands especially if I'll be using this a lot and put my knife away that just made that mark right there instead of splitting down I, my knife just hit that so that didn't that's just debarking it a little bit it didn't split down I just took it sheerly off it's just a sheer cut so that's just a quick tip i'll clear these knots off so when i am running this down my hands real quick it's not going to tear my hands up and then we'll get to the actual portion of quartering the gig here's the end that i'm going to use for the quartering i'm going to quarter it and this will be the frog gig portion this is about an inch to three quarter inch is the diameter in this and that's what i think will work best Fishers is a bit larger, so we'll see. And again, we'll be using these next weekend to practice with them in a pond at the area we're going for that camp out. So now what we have to do is quarter this down and I'm gonna show you guys how I'm gonna set this up and safely baton this down. Now that I have to baton this, I'm gonna use this tree right here, it's a pine tree, to wedge this in that I'm not gonna baton up against. So it's a stable surface because if you're pounding on the soft ground, it's gonna take the impact the impact away and it won't baton as easy and you're going to struggle which will or could result in injury and all I'm going to use is use this mora and a lot of people say they're not full tang and they'll break from batoning from my experience this little mora which is like 15 bucks will not break from batoning unless you're really going crazy with it and doing things you shouldn't be doing in the first place so I'll bring this up to you guys and what I'm going to do is I'm going to place my knife on there See if I can get it on the camera here. Quarter it, split it in half one way. I'm gonna turn and then split it in quarter. That's exactly what I'm gonna do. It's very simple. So I'm gonna split it in half and then split it in quarters. And I'm probably gonna split it down, let's say three inches is what I'm gonna do at first. And then I'm gonna wedge some sticks in there to get that spread. And this is the spread you're gonna have all, all depends on the prey that you're going for. So I will get that split down, and then I'll get back with you guys. There is what it looks like. I'm sure you guys know what a quarter quartering looks like. And then I split it down four inches, give or take. And then I'll wedge the sticks in to get the spread on it. Now that I've put my sticks down in there, it's spread it out. And I probably don't want much more spread than that, considering the size of the frogs that we're going for. And another reason for doing this is you need these spread out so you can get fine points on on your four quarters on your gig. Because if you can't get the fine points, it's not going to penetrate the frog and you will not get the frog and it will stay on here. So you won't have food at the end of the day. So these are probably just two inch sticks or whatever it takes because I'm also going to lash some bank line around it. And then I may lash some under it so the split does not go farther down. I don't want it to go much further than that because eventually if I don't lash it, 
it's probably going to split farther and farther and farther and it's not going to last me a long time. I want this to be a long lasting tool so I'm going to take the time, carve the points on here properly and if I really wanted to make it long term I could actually fire harden the tips which I will get into more detail in a different video but for right now I'm just going to carve the tips on here and then lash this together. A frog gig up except for the points I have not carved that all the way yet and I've still got a lash right here together. The weather is not looking very good right now so I just want to wrap this video up and explain the rest of it. I've got some bank line in my pocket. It's probably three to four foot which I will just lash around here. I'll probably make a clove hitch or a bow line or something. Start and then just wrap around make sure it's not going to come undone so these splits stay the same and won't split down no farther because the last thing I want is this to slowly sp split down so I can compensate for that by just lashing around so it won't split no more. These spears or the gigs that I made here are probably about four inches so that it will penetrate the frog and it will stay on here and it will not get away. And again, this is taller than I am. You wanna bring yours over here, Fisher, and we'll show the difference here. His is a lot taller, because he's a lot taller, so his is right there. Seven foot. Probably about seven foot, is that what you yeah. think? And this is probably more like six foot. And we're gonna try them out this weekend. So if any of the, I wanted to make this video for the scouts in our troop, if any of you guys wanna watch this video to make a frog gig before we go on that camp out or after, because I'll show you guys this frog gig on that camp out, and hopefully we'll get a couple frogs and cook them over the fire, that'd be awesome. So again, I always appreciate you guys watching my videos. If you like what you see, subscribe to my channel, check out my other videos. I have a Facebook page called BSA Bushcraft. I'd appreciate it if you dropped a like there. If you got any questions, you can email me at bsabushcraft at gmail.com or leave a comment below. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next one. Take care. Came up to the house real quick and I lashed this together and finished the points on my frog gig. I wanted to quickly show you guys exactly what it looks like finished so you have an idea. And again, this is probably about six foot tall, taller than I am. And I've got my four prongs, which aren't too sharp because I don't want them to jam into the mud, hit a rock, and then dull right away, and they'll just blunt over. So I want them sharp enough to penetrate the frog. And then I have those two sticks jammed down to spread this out. So first off, so I could sharpen it, and it would stay forced out. So there would be that gap. I just lashed some paracord around the sticks to keep them in place. And then I used one of the Boy, Boy Scout skills I know, which is whipping a rope. And I do that a lot for my handles and stuff. And I do it, I just whip it. You make a loop and then you go around it and then you feed it through that loop. And I did that in the bottom so it won't let it split out no more. This thing is really rigid and I don't see it going anywhere anytime soon. So I just wanted to quickly show you guys that. Me and Fisher are gonna I'm um, at the camp out show them how to frog gig. It's our first time, so I'll bring the camera along so you guys can see. We'll probably do it at night. Actually, we will do it at night with a headlamp, and I'll bring my camera along. So thanks again, guys, for watching. I hope you guys found this video very useful.